Hello and welcome to Nothing But The Truth. The government's decision to ban the BBC documentary India's Daughter has provoked a storm of angry protest. No one has spoken more passionately and forcefully than the poet and Rajya Sabha MP Javed Akhtar. On Wednesday, his speech was the virtual tour de force. On this occasion, his anger was clear and undeniable. But how does he now respond to the carefully considered reasons supporting the ban which have been put forward in the last few days? Here to answer is Javed Akhtar himself. Javed Akhtar, on Wednesday you made a powerful and emotional speech in the Rajya Sabha against the government ban on the BBC documentary India's Daughter. For those who didn't have the benefit to, to hear you, can you explain why are you so vigorously opposed to this ban? As a matter of fact, it was not only the government's idea, as a matter of fact, the government was explaining that and uh, uh, trying to cajole and uh, convince the opposition that we are doing exactly what you want us to do. Uh, this was almost a kind of a unanimous call that it should be banned without any give, serious thinking about it. I have seen the documentary because it was up to a point, it was on YouTube. Uh, there is nothing derogatory about India. There is nothing even against the police. And uh, it shows that India is a sensitive society, but obviously psychopaths and rapists and killers are in every society of the world. Uh, but how the society has reacted, every country, every developed okay. country, whether it is Great Britain or USA, has number of rapes. But have you seen young people reacting the way people reacted in this country? That no. shows a level of sensitivity. No. As a matter of fact, the police was supposed to uh, supposed to uh, uh, register FIR in 90 days. They have the right to do it within 90 days. They did it in 17 days. Absolutely. Look I at the to, efficiency, the way they caught them, the way they... Javid Akhtar, I want to go back to your speech rather than talk about what happened when the rape happened in 2012. You said in your speech that it was a good thing the yeah. documentary had been made because it would permit millions of Indians to get to know and to realize that they think just like rapists. Why is that so important? Of course, you know, we accept that hair is a warp, thick, uh, 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 dirty man without any morality, without any aesthetics, without any humanity. Now this man is saying certain things which I have heard from so-called respectable leaders, from so-called saviors of morality of my society, by so-called people who are the protectors of culture and tradition and so on. So I am, in a way, there is a kind of satisfaction in me that now they will see that there is some commonality between their thinking and the thinking of this rapist, this pervert. So they better review their thinking. The pervert says she should not have been out of her house. That's what so many respectable, so-called respectable people say. The pervert is saying that she should not have been around with somebody who is not her brother or husband or father. Okay. That is what so many people say that in society. I mean, they should realize, looking at the documentary, that how much uh, uh, they share as far as the mental... Uh, 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 state of mind is concerned, how much they share with this rapist and they should be ashamed of themselves. I want Besides, Javid Akhtar, this, I want Javid Akhtar to put to you, yeah. at this stage, some of the main moral arguments that are being made in favor of the ban and to get you to respond to them. First of okay. all, it said that this movie yeah, sure, provides sure. a platform to the rapist and thus gives him an opportunity to explain and contextualize his behavior as a result of which it could become more explicable and less monstrous and less beyond comprehension. And as a result, the rapist could then begin to be seen in an improved or better light. How do you respond to that first argument? I mean, this argument is based on an extremely poor opinion of Indian people. This argument is based that if the Indian people listen to the rapist, what and pervert, ideas, they will agree with him. I mean, what kind of opinion we have of our own people? As a matter of fact, I think they will, in a way, purge themselves from ideas which are slightly resembling to these ideas of the rapist. 
obviously they hate him they dislike him they think he is evil personification how can you believe that they will agree with the rapist okay i mean what kind of opinion you have for a common indian let me then put to you the second moral argument that is often made for banning the film it says okay. that the yeah film expresses an attitude to women it expresses an attitude to rape that is so disturbing that it would unsettle people and as the delhi police argued to the delhi high court it would lead to law and order problems have it almost everybody who had any level of curiosity has seen the documentary so what law and order as a matter of fact in a way it is complimentary for the police it is complimentary for the system and this documentary also shows the mother and the father the documentary has been made by their permission i mean let us not be more loyal than the king and holier than thou they you can see the pain you can the agony you can see those tears which have not come out of the eyes you your heart goes for the parent so who are these people who will look uh, listen to the pervert than their parents so you are I mean, saying to they me they should be in mental asylum you are saying to me two very important things first of all you are saying there's absolutely no way in which this documentary gives a platform to a rapist thus giving him a chance to reflect himself in a better light that view is in fact a denigration of the intelligence of the indian people and secondly you are also saying there's no way that this film is going to lead to law and order problems and when the delhi police in their petition no. to the delhi high court claimed it would they're simply mistaken and wrong yes and at the same time of course they are totally wrong and i don't know why they have done it i mean this is only political pressure not only from the government but the opposition too in a way they were unanimous about it and they are wrong there then is there is another allegation now i'll tell you what is the allegation let no the allegation is that the pervert has described that rape in a graphic manner nothing is further from the truth as a matter of fact this liar he was constantly saying this pervert was constantly saying that i didn't know the details because i was all the time on the steering wheel so i can't give you the detail you know even these psychopaths are very clever people they have self instinct for self protection can I? so he how can he give the de graphic detail the moment he'll give the graphic detail uh, it will be proved that he was right there let and me let his me defense is i was on the steering wheel let me time. stop you there because this leads to the third moral argument that yeah. is being made in favor of banning the film the argument says that the views expressed What in this that? documentary and the details that are given of the rape whether they come from the rapist himself or whether they come from the commentaries and irrelevant but the views expressed in this film and the details given of the rape are so graphic and disturbing that they must not be seen by the young and the impressionable this is they, an they, adult they film are not. and because When it's you... an adult film it should not okay. be on general release on television or the internet because that is a medium which not just the young but children can access they must be protected there is nothing like that as a matter of fact when you say use this word graphic it means somebody is describing the physical or the local uh, detail of the whole scene the visual of that whole scene he did not and he could not because his defense is that i was on the steering wheel all the time I never saw what is happening I only knew that it is happening but, beyond but I didn't know the that it is because says, I was on the stage should me. children be protected so, from this film should the young be protected is it the wrong film for them it is not only the rapist in the documentary there is a mother there is a father there are students who are protesting so who do you think the child will try to emulate yeah, those young boys and girls who are protesting or the rapist he will Do you think child is so dumb that he won't be able to see the pain and agony on the face of the mother? I mean it was a picture of pain. All right. Let I, me then I was crying when I saw it. Let... I was crying when I saw that documentary. Let me then move beyond the moral arguments to a legal argument that is made for either not showing the film or at least delaying the broadcast and it's made by lawyers like Indira Jai Singh Vrinda Grover. They say two things. First of all, they say that this film could undermine the appeal against the conviction and the death sentence which is presently at the Supreme Court level. And secondly, they say 
They have genuine concerns whether the so-called informed consent obtained from Mukesh the rapist was genuine informed consent. Now, do you believe that these are two good reasons for delaying the broadcast of the film, at least in India, so that the appeal process can end and so that we can be sure that the informed consent is genuinely informed? I have great respect for both these ladies, but uh, with all due respect, I differ with them. I am not a lawyer. If there are technicalities, suppose a particular permission was required from the Home Ministry and it has not been taken, per perhaps per suppose there was uh, uh, permission required from the jail authorities, it was not taken. That is another topic. I don't want to get into it because I don't understand these technicalities. But the fact is that the fury in the parliament that I saw was not because of the technicality, not because that particular permission was not taken. No, it was because of the content. It was because how dare you tell these things. As a matter of fact, the things that come across, yeah. that but here in India, the people are sensitive to these things. Here in the India, the law is working properly. They caught the culprit. That I understand. They put them behind jail. Here in India, we have a fair... Javed Akhtar, yeah. the fury expressed in Parliament, I understand. Yeah. But the question is, in broadcasting this film at this stage, are we undermining an appeal in the Supreme Court and therefore undermining the last recourse open to Mukesh the rapist or is that an issue of no real concern as far as the film is concerned and as far as the need to open the eyes of the Indian people is concerned. Where do you stand on that issue because though it's presented as a legal issue it does have a very strong moral content. As long as there is a legal issue of technicality I'll step aside because I'm no authority on legality. But the fact is my common sense says that the only lawyer Unlike Indra Jai Singh or uh, Rinda Grover, the only lawyer who should stand up against this, uh, my common sense, against this documentary, is the defense lawyer of the rapist. He may say that, see, the documentary will even spoil my case. I can understand that because you hate him more when you listen to him. You decide that this is an, worse than an animal creature. You see that and your heart goes for the parents of that girl and you respect those young people of this country who stood up unan uh, unanimously can against I then, this crime. Can, can I then I mean, put to you two political rain. points? But two I have points. never seen this kind of protest. Let yeah. me put to you, Javid Akhtar, two political points made by politicians. Both of them are people you know well. The first is a point made by Home Minister Rajnath Singh. He says that the producer of the film has violated the conditions on which she was given access to Mukesh. The producer, on the other hand, Leslie Altwin, has vehemently denied that. She's even shown on other TV channels letters proving that she complied. However, there is a dispute between the government and the producer. Is there an argument for saying, till that dispute is sorted out, the film should not have been shown? Or do you think that's just too technical and silly a matter to my delay friend, a film being shown? My friend, Karan, eh, Karan, every time you take it to the legalities, but the outrage in the parliament or the kind of these so-called moralists are not outraged because of these technicalities. They are, maybe the so, is maybe so. But are region. the technicalities a ground for delaying the film? They may not be outraged because of them, but if the technicalities exist and the film producer no, no, has the, violated conditions, is that a reason for not showing the film? But that is not the reason at the moment. The opposition and the... Well, no, that is the reason. Uh, Forgive me, that is the reason cited by the Home Minister. Please listen to me. Please listen to me. Now, may I, may I answer you? Okay. Uh, people who are reacting, people who are complaining, people who are upset and outraged were not outraged because there was some technical mistake. Uh, it was, the reason was different, the reason was moral, the okay. reason was about the uh, question on freedom of expression and so on. This was the issue. They were angry, their anger was not fake. They okay. were genuinely upset. I understand. And However, the truth of the matter is the I, Home Minister did cite please, this as a reason. Please, please, you are not impressed by no, it. No, no, no. If, if you will not let me complete my sentence, then I will not let you complete your sentence. So can we have a deal that when you speak, I listen, and when I speak, you listen? 
Is it possible? Absolutely. Otherwise, I won't let you speak. I'll continue talking. Okay, good. You see, the outrage, the anger, the moment we think of Nirbhaya is totally understandable. But it is misplaced. This anger is misplaced. The anger should be against the values, okay. not against the documentary. The anger, we should be frightened then, to realize that whatever this rape is saying, there are so many respectable people can who I, use this logic and this reasoning. Can I then, in the light of what you're saying, put to you one more political point, this time made not by the Home Minister, but made by the Parliamentary Affairs Minister, Venkai Naidu. He claims that this film is a conspiracy against India. He says the film is designed to give India a bad name. That's why it must not be shown, not just in India, it not, must not be shown anywhere in the world. Yeah, yeah, there's a word for it. It is called paranoia. People speaking on television channels, not the Home, the home Minister or the Parliamentary Affairs Minister, but people on other television channels have said that horrible rapes happen all over the world. Many have happened in the West. This film, they maybe say, they didn't, exclusively they did concentrates on India to, and Nirbhai, and therefore not, it's picking on India. Maybe they did not get the rights to show the documentary. A channel that had the right was defending it. Channel that did not have the right of the uh, uh, documentary were being moralist. So this is sour grapes. Uh, uh, and becoming... Uh, so this is a case of sour grapes, isn't it? They are wrong. Either they have not... Yeah, yeah. Either they have not seen the documentary or they are upset that why they did not have the right or they think this is the popular opinion and they will look great nationalists, so they should say this. Javid Akhtar, let's take a break at that point. When I come back, I want to ask you, why is recourse to censorship or banning our first instinctive response when we come across a book or a movie we don't like? Welcome back to Nothing But The Truth and an interview with the poet and Rajya Sabha MP, Javed Akhtar. Javed Akhtar, let's widen our discussion at this point. India's Daughter is not the first time a film or a documentary or a book that we don't like has been banned. Just recently, the censor board tried to ban the use of swear words, even though many of them are form of and are part of people's everyday speech. More recently, Fifty Shades of Grey has not been given a film certificate. Last year, Wendy Doniger's book was pulped even though it's been released three years ago. And in fact, the truth is, the sad truth is, that India's story of banning and censoring goes all the way back to the 1950s when Aubrey Menon's Ramayan was banned, to the early 1960s when Stanley Wolpert's Nine Hours to Rama, Rama was banned. And the question I want yeah. to ask you is this. Why is it that we seek to ban, seek to censor as our first instinctive response when we come across a book or a film that we don't like or that disturbs us. Why do we do this? It is hypocrisy. Pure hypocrisy. Nothing else. People who get so disturbed that how can you show uh, a girl, Indian girl, daughter of India in this uh, light and you can make this kind of a documentary, they never get upset that in any big city there are thousands of girls who are pushed into profession of prostitution against their will. They are bonded laborers. These prostitutes are prisoners. Does it disturb them? These girls are not Indian girls. Thousands and lakhs of girls in every city. You know, you speak what kind of morality they are talking of. You speak At least 10 crore people in this country sleep on empty stomach. That doesn't shame them. And this documentary shames them. Women are beaten day in and day out. That doesn't shame them. The documentary shames them. They are hypocrites. You know, you talk of hypocrisy. How do you feel when journalists, when academics, and yes, to be true, when television channels who should be champions of freedom actually take up the call to ban, to censor, because they don't like a book or they don't like a film? Very sad. It's pitiable. I mean, that shows a very small mind. Is it also a betrayal of what academics, journalists, television channels and newspapers should stand for? 
that they should be championing freedom, they should be championing expression and openness rather than taking up the cause of ban. Does it undermine them? Karan, in my worst tenure, I never use a four letter word. In joke, jest, humor, I don't use a four letter word. None of my friends can say that he has heard me speaking one word which can be called vulgar. But I am against censor board's uh, banning of these 28 words. That is wrong. Because in a film like Bandit Queen, in a film like uh, Gang of. Uh, what is the Has name of the place? Samastipur or whatever. If that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if this language is used, it is to catch the authenticity, not to titillate, not to vulgarize. And I, I, I have no problem with these kind of words in such kind of film. But at the same time, if it's a crude, mainstream, uh, vulgar, uh, commercial picture where you use these words uh, for cheap thrills, they should be censored. Can I the put words this? themselves cannot be censored. That is wrong. Can I put this to you? As you look at the trajectory of banning and censoring, be it books, be it films, be it documentaries, over the last 67 years of independent India, do you get the feeling that India is becoming a more tolerant and open society as a democracy should be? Or do you get the feeling that the walls are as narrowing fact, and closing in on us? Fact, as a matter of fact, with great sadness, I am saying that the uh, liberal sphere uh, that freedom is becoming less and less. This affair is becoming narrower and narrower. And I am not blaming any particular government for that. It is the society to a great extent, the society that is happening. A kind of fascistic mentality is spreading in the society. I mean, the kind of film we were making in the 70s, 60s, and the kind of jokes or the kind of liberties those films have taken, it is unimaginable to take them today. Look at Urdu poetry, the kind of poetry that has been written 200 years ago, against fundamentalism, against religion, against God. Today, a poet, Urdu poet, would write that poem, he'll get fatwas. In a word, Who, because... As a matter of fact, with time, your liberal ground is becoming smaller. That is the point I want to end with. I don't That's have very much time left. That is very disturbing. Are you worried that India is becoming an intolerant and illiberal society, not dramatically, but slowly and steadily? Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, it is happening and we should fight against it. That fight is a very and important fight. It is fight. not only a pol pol political phenomenon, it is happening in the society too. Absolutely. And we need to wake up, realize it and fight against it. Is that right, sure. Javid Akhtar? Sure. Javid Akhtar. Thank yeah, you. you can count on me. Thank you I'm very much you. indeed. The country is hearing you. They see that smile, but they also see your hand go up. Javid Akhtar, thank you very much for speaking to us today.